The last time I took an English class, my English teacher told me I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. And the same year I took a speech class and my speech teacher, he said, quote unquote, Ms. Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. Oh. It was demotivated people, sad people, hurt people hurt, sad people make other people sad. Hurt. Bottom line, don't take it personal, hurt people hurt. I had to literally be willing to not only relocate my mind, but relocate my body so I can relocate my finances and relocate my possibility, relocate my son's future. I was very clear the future my son was gonna have if I didn't do something. And I was not subscribing to that, not on my watch. My son's father went to prison when he was eight months old. And he's been in prison since my son was eight months old. Whoa! My son turns 22 this year. My son is an African-American male child living in South Central Los Angeles when, at that time, he had a 66% chance rate of going to prison, not on my watch. So I was willing to be radical. See, most people want the convenience of transformation without the inconvenience. So if you want to have a conviction for something, you have to sign up, sign up to be inconvenienced. We're trying to find convictions and passion and breakthrough on the inside of our box. Well, when you realize that the box doesn't even exist, and so when you start thinking like that, all of a sudden, everything is possible. So I disrupt people when I say, you want to make me extraordinary because it lets you off the hook. What if you do? What if the God that we call God, the divine, whatever your faith is, what if there's no partial? It's not going to give me a hookup and not give you one. Not going to give me an opportunity and not give you one. I'm just not going to stop because I believe all things are available to us. I'm just willing to go after them. Are you willing? And then that is so disruptive because then you got to make a decision. Because it's easier to live inside the parameters of, well, as a black woman, well, as born and raised in South Central, well, I'm academically, I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. I wrote seven books. I'm dyslexic. I'm not perfect. What I do really well is I manage my imperfection well. And so we're all waiting for perfect. It's an illusion that will never come to you, and it's an excuse to never show up and play. Your story is not meant to be your fortress. Your story is meant to be your fuel. Yeah. Any story. Like the fact, the beauty of me being one of the top 1% earners in America is that I was on government's assistance. The beauty is that when you show the little engine that could story, like I'm not gonna run fast, but I ain't gonna stop running. I might slow down and have to breathe and catch my breath, but I'm not stopping because I believe all things are available to all of us and good people should do well because when good people do well, good people just do more good in the world. I'm on government's assistance and I run out of money and I had to buy Pampers for Jelani. And I had $11.42 in the bank. And I remember wrapping my son in a towel for two days. I remember the second day, like you said, I had my hand on Jelani's stomach and I said, don't worry, baby. Mommy will never be this broke or broken again. And that day, what shifted for me, I was willing to completely die to any form of me that I had been so that I can birth the woman that I was becoming. The reason why a lot of people won't become who they want is because they're too attached to who they've been. I knew it wasn't working for me any longer. I had hit my version of rock bottom. So I was willing to let go of everything and everybody. See, another reason why people won't get there is because the doorway is for you to fit through. You trying to carry everybody else through because you trying to be rescue 911. And you got to rescue you first. I am much more valuable to my family and to my community because I was willing to let them go. Go through the door myself teach myself, learn myself, condition myself, and then come back and get them. I'm much more valuable to them now. But I had to go through a window time of 10 years of judgment. I, I had to be willing to, to allow my conviction to make me inconvenienced. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing full out? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. That's lonely, by the way. Why won't most people do it? Because it's scary and it's lonely. So what did I do? I was willing 
to find people who had what I didn't have, who were living lives that I wasn't living, who believed things that I didn't know about, and I was willing to become their student. I got up every day and I ate a slice of humble pie. See, when you get to this level, even me 10 years ago, you can get caught up by reading your own fine print. And we get caught up in our bios, we get caught up in our status. I never allowed that to stop me from going and sitting at the hem of someone and saying, what do you know about wealth? So I went to people who knew how to make it, keep it, grow it. I went to people who was about serving others to the highest level. See, I make a lot of money because I serve more people. See, all your success is on the other side of service. People are trying to make money, if it begins and ends with money, it's gonna be a short-lived victory. But if it's about transforming lives, then the wind keeps going and going and growing and growing. So I went to people that knew what I didn't know. And I, I, I killed my ego every day. And I got hungry and I learned. I went to the same training 42 times. I wanna know what you know. I wanna walk like you, talk like you, and then I wanna then embed me in it. But success leaves clues, we're just not picking them up. I was the only African-American person at this conference. I was one of two women at this conference. Within the last 29 sessions, I led the conference. But I was willing to be the student first. So that's what I did, number one. And number two, I looked at every toxic behavior in my life. Everyone. If you wake up every day and say, I have nothing to protect, I have nothing to prove, I have nothing to hide, I have nothing to defend. Now, who do I choose to be? Because your energy is consumed with protecting, proving, hiding, and defending. But if you let go of that, then now you're in creation. Every day I told myself that. Every day I got in the mirror and I said three sentences. And I gave each sentence seven different endings. And at times I was crying so hard I couldn't understand myself because the ending, the sentence was so difficult to say. Every day I looked in the mirror and said, Lisa, I'm proud that you. And I found seven different things to celebrate Lisa for because we are under celebrated. Because you want someone to celebrate you more than you celebrate yourself. So I started every day celebrating Lisa, forgiving Lisa, and making a commitment to Lisa. And then I was willing to invest money in me. I would have my son at daycare during the day. I'd work nine hours. I'd pick him up from daycare, take him back to my office. I'd take a 30 minute break from six o'clock to 6.30 to go get him. I'd start working from 6.30 until midnight every day at my office on me. And I, I did it every day, every day, every day. I stopped going out to dinner. I stopped going out dancing. I stopped getting my nails done, stopped getting my hair done. And every two weeks when Ella Unified paid me, I wrote a check to my dream. And I wrote in the memo line, funding my dream. And then every check I wrote to myself, I made a challenge with myself that it had to be 5% more than the next check. My entire life, I was willing to disrupt my entire life to buy my future, to buy my possibility, to give my dream a chance. See, we're not supposed to tuck our dreams on the pillow when we get up in the morning. We're not supposed to leave them at home and go and fulfill somebody else's dream. We're not supposed to do that. That's not what we're wired to do. That's not who we are. Your human spirit doesn't care about the economy. The human spirit doesn't care that my son's father went to prison. The human spirit doesn't care what's happened to your family. The human spirit doesn't care about the past. You may have been molested or your family may have been broke or, or you may have been betrayed or you may have a divorce. Your human spirit doesn't care about any of that. Your human spirit simply says, what's our command for tomorrow? What do you want to create? It's not keeping score. Your brain is keeping score because your brain is designed to keep you safe. Your soul, your intuition, your human spirit is designed to make you soar. And when you get to the edge of that stage, your brain will always tell you to step back. It's always going to tell you to step back because you can fall. Always. It's going to tell you to step back because before you fail, the last time you did this, you saw someone else fail. You could hurt, you could be off work. It's gonna tell you, it's designed to keep you safe. So you have to be willing to play between your brain and your soul. 
And on some days, you gotta just listen to your soul. And you gotta say, I'm gonna leap, I'm gonna get to the edge. Most people are at the edge, and you're standing at the edge, and you're watching everyone else fly. You know, watching people's lives on Facebook. You're at the edge, watching someone else live, wondering what it's gonna be like when you jump without ever jumping. And I'm just here to tell you, jump. Because only three things can happen. You're either gonna jump and fly, or you're gonna jump and fall on something soft. Are you gonna fall down hard? Either way, you're gonna get back up. You already know you got what it takes to get back up. You're not, your greatest fear is not that you will fall. Your greatest fear is that you will live a full life and never fly, that you never leaped. You're not afraid of dying. You're afraid of dying before the world sees who you really are, before they really get your fingerprint, before they really feel your breath, before they really get your contribution, before they really feel you. That's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to leave this place without us knowing you were here. All I'm doing is giving my, my dream a chance. And I'm not extraordinary. You don't get off the hook. You don't get to be let off the hook. I'm an ordinary woman who chooses every day to make one more extraordinary decision. Every day I'm prepared for what's ahead of me. There's no elevator. If you watch me, watch me so that you, it makes you want to be a better man, want to be a better woman. I'm a trainer. I'm a transformational coach. I teach people how to turn the unbelievable into your reality. That's what I do. We're going to grind. First thing I'm going to do is say, look, get your deodorant out, put your tennis shoes on. We're going to squat. We're going to lunge. We're going to run. But on the other side of this, you will see a life that's barely recognizable. Why? Because I'm living that life. Look at who I am. I'm a C student from Dorsey High School. I ran track. I, I got a D in minus in speech and a fail in English. When my English professor from high school was in Barnes and Nobles and he turned over Chicken Soup for the African American Soul, my first book, and he saw my face on the back. He said he stood in Barnes and Nobles and started crying. Whoa. He said he knew I was a good person, but he didn't know if I'd make it because I wasn't talented in any particular area other than track. I wasn't talented academic wise. I didn't, it didn't fire off fast for me. I learned later that it was because I was dyslexic and I had all these other learning styles. It makes me more unique. I was willing to, to be inconvenienced for my conviction. Like if you go where you've never gone, do what you've never done and say what you've never said, you'll become the woman and the man you've always known yourself to be. Like I came here to disrupt everyone watching me to make sleeping and complacency difficult, to make you mildly to moderately to significantly uncomfortable in any form of mediocrity. I don't come to keep you comfortable. I don't come to rah-rah you. I don't come to kumbaya, motivate. I come to disrupt your norm so that your abnormal can come out, so that your original can come out, your uncharted turf can come out. I come to disrupt any form of normal, and I do it with the freedom of being liked or not liked. It's your job to do the best you possible. And in doing you, you inspire us. Because we're all trying to do each other. That if you can master you and your contribution to the planet, your unique fingerprint, your individual breath, your DNA, you're an unrepeatable miracle. You are an unrepeatable miracle. Give me some of you. Give me your uniqueness. I'm just here to disrupt everybody's norm and give them my uniqueness. And hopefully inspire millions to do the same. I teach people, how do you get connected with you? You haven't met you yet. How do you meet you? And I have you write down every lie you tell yourself. And I have you talk about just the lies around money first. You might fill up two, three pages, just the lies around money. You can't think about it and then not write it, because if you think about it, it's a lie, because the exercises expose the lies. Then I have you tell yourself all the lies you've told yourself about who you are. All the lies you tell yourself about relationships. Once you finish that, you read all the lies and you're gonna feel nauseous. And it may take you two or three days because you gotta, want, gotta take a break from it, right? You finish it, don't put it off more than four days because now you're procrastinating again. And then in between the lies, so you write all the lies down in pencil and you write the truth in between each lie. You're gonna cry on the lies, you're gonna cry on the truth because it's gonna be exposed to you the truth that you knew, but you forgot you knew it. So you're living like you don't know your truth. Then, after you've done that, you read for two days the lie, the truth. So when you ask, how do I get people there, I do things like that. So I always tell people, watch my life and you'll be entertained. Step in and learn how to manage your life and you'll be transformed. You gotta go out the door, put on your best running shoes, get your back strong, and go after it and run like it, after it like you're late for work. 
Like we'll run if we're late for work, run for someone else's dream harder than we'll run for ours. Self-development is something we haven't jumped into enough. We mistake spirituality for self-development. And we think spiritual awareness is self-development. Spiritual awareness is spiritual awareness. And it's understanding the divine and the higher power and the God, whatever you call it, and having some place to release to. That's not self-development. Self-development is doing that daggone work I just talked about, exposing the lies that are in your head that's running you the chatter, the negative Nancy in your head, you know, managing it and exposing it. That's our work. And no one shows us how to do that work. If you can own your brilliance while owning your your imperfections. If you can own your giant while owning your smallness. If you can live in duality, constant duality, the freedom will be earth shaking. If you can live in that. See, either you don't want to be as great as you really are and you're trying to dim your light so that others won't feel insecure about themselves in your presence. Can you give yourself permission to live in the duality of your imperfections and your smallness and what you're learning and what you still have to learn and your greatness and your brilliance and your light? Can you allow them to coexist and then serve them up to the world? To love you, to see you, to inhale you, to judge you, to leave you, to love you. You're just, some of us are just as afraid of being loved as we are to be left. Can you give the world permission to leave you and love you?